Uh, as you'll have heard us talking about uh, today, there was a very special start to the day with a fly past over the ground from a classic aircraft. Here it comes, I think it's on its way. Have a listen. I mean, listen to this. Yeah. What a sound. There it is, above us now, going from right to left. A half Cuban I'm not familiar with. I certainly don't try it in my aeroplane. Round they go. Blue reconnaissance Spitfire. Heading round behind us now, Golf Papa Romeo X-Ray India, for those fans who are wondering what his registration is. Fading away into the distance. The question is, is it going to come back? We've got little robot cameras lining up to film the arrival of uh, Crawley and Butler, who are down, they've come down the steps, and they're waiting, I think, for the moment that... Uh, who is coming back? Sight. And here's the half cube, and up he goes. Vertically. The Pakistan field is watching. Oh, now that is spectacular. One of the players there, I saw clapping his hands together, just sheer excitement. The noise that came up there, totally unexpected. I thought he'd done his bit. But <laughs> clearly he wanted to come back and have another go. That was fantastic. Certainly was. Very special moment with the fly past of a blue Spitfire from the team of the Aircraft Restoration Company based at Duxford. All in a very good cause. We can talk to the owner, the pilot, John Romain, who actually did a lot of flying for the film Dunkirk. And you can tell us all about uh, today, John, and everything else you've been doing. You show off. <laughs> did it seem like that? Oh, you took me by surprise. I thought you'd gone. Well, the first uh, loop around was... Um... It was high and it was distance, just so I could have a quick look around and make sure the site was as clear as it needed to be to um, to overfly you. So the first one, your cameras caught me, obviously, because they can zoom in from very far away. Um, but the first one was a recon look, and then the, the second one was the proper flyby. <laughs> and how, how <laughs> low were you when you came over? Uh, 700 feet across the, uh, the ground, okay. and then... Yeah. As I pulled up into the half Cuban, uh, went up to about 3,000 over the top and then pulled down again, um, accelerate down again. It was all to give lots of energy that um, if anything should go wrong, I can obviously glide well clear of all of you lovely people there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was absolutely spectacular. And I, I mean, the Pakistan fielders were applauding and you, you must get that sort of reception wherever you go. Yeah, the, the Spitfire, of course, is um, everybody loves the Spitfire and the sound of the Spitfire as well. And so um, doing this uh, NHS Spitfire um, project has been amazing. I mean, everywhere we've gone, people have really loved it. They've, they've got on to what we're trying to do. Uh, they've got attachment to it. And it's, yeah, the, the feedback has been immense and, it, and it's been fantastic. So tell us what you are doing and how much money you're, you're aiming to raise for the NHS. Well, the, the amount we're hoping to raise, of course, is as high as possible. But yes. um, the, the idea is that the, the aircraft is going around the whole of the UK um, with that NHS thank you underneath the wings. Um, linked to that is the Just Giving page, uh, Just Giving NHS Spitfire. Uh, and people can go on to there, they can make a donation and they can also nominate themselves or a family member or a loved one or anybody that's done something special during the pandemic. And we write that name onto that actual aeroplane. So wow. she's flying around the country currently with just over 2,000 names on. Uh, there'll be a it'll be 3,000 by tomorrow. Um, and it's going up gradually. We've just passed the 50,000 mark on the funds which is fantastic. Uh, we have the ability, though, to measuring the, the plan of a Spitfire, we can actually get 80,000 names on tour. Really? And so <laughs> if you look at 80,000 names and then yeah. the amount of donations that that could draw in, then we could achieve over a million pounds with her. 
Brilliant. And you were flying. For, I mean, everyone went outside onto the doorstep and, and applauded the NHS every week. You, you, you picked a place and, and, and overflew there too, didn't you? Yeah, we did. It started off with, um, you know, it's, it's a family-owned aeroplane. It's based at Duxford in Cambridge. During the pandemic, uh, we'd finished repairing her from a, um, some damage and then we needed to test fly her. Uh, we were allowed to fly within 10 miles of base, which we did. Uh, and the local villages, including my own village in Elmden, um, they just loved it to the extent that we thought, oh, we'll have to do that on a Thursday night with the NHS clap. Uh, we did that, and of course, more people loved it. Uh, and for the final clap, my son said, "Let's put thank you NHS under the wings," uh, which is what we did. And of course, that then became uh, the aeroplane you see today, because so many people loved seeing that. Uh, we then started to do the hospitals, and it's grown from there into what it is now, where the we're linked. You know, we link in with the NHS. We get a big list of hospitals. We do big routes and encompass as many hospital sites as we can during those uh, routes. So we've done up to 40 this week already. Uh, we now are looking to get further into the north through Scotland, dropping into Northern Ireland. So we'd, we'd, the intention is to cover the whole of the UK. It's brilliant. It's absolutely wonderful. Right, so your aeroplane, why blue? It's blue because uh, during the war, she was built in 1944... Uh, but used as a photographic aeroplane. So they painted them that lovely blue so that, you know, looking into the sky, they basically disappeared, which is what they wanted them to do. So they couldn't be seen, but they were up there taking photographs. Right. And so this aeroplane uh, went through uh, into Holland initially in 40, late 44, and then during 45, all the way through Holland, all the way down as the troops are going further and further into Germany, this aeroplane followed taking photographs. Um, at mm. the end of the war, it was flown back into the UK, uh, was in storage like many, many thousands of other Spitfires in particular, but was selected to be the one that was gifted to the then US uh, air attache in London. He, he said to the British government, I'd love a Spitfire. And it just so happens that they picked this one. Um, it went to him and it was then flown by a, uh, an ex-air uh, transport auxiliary pilot called Lettuce Curtis, <laughs> who was a lady pilot that used to deliver Spitfires oh, in the war. They're amazing the stories, aren't they? They're amazing stories yeah. of the women delivering Spitfires. There are. And Lettuce flew this aeroplane uh, on any occasion that the air attaché wanted her to. But also he decided that they should enter it into some air races in the late 1940s, early 1950s. Um, and that's what she did. And so she was then racing against some of the, the big test pilots of the big organisations. So from de Havilland, she was racing against John Cunningham in Vampires and all sorts of things. But she ended up with uh, holding the uh, ladies' speed record for a 100-kilometre closed circuit. And that record still stands to this day, wow. flown in that actual Spitfire. Because all these aircraft, and you restore a lot of, not just Spitfires, but, but just concentrate on the Spitfires, they, they all must have a story of their own. They do. Every single one of them has got history of some sort. And, uh, and some of the histories are very special. Um, this one is, is special for lots of reasons, mostly actually post-war rather than during the war. I mean, during the war, of course, it took lots of photos, but yes. post-war, it's got a lovely history. Was that was it a single seater then? So the pilot was was taking the photographs of out of the window. No, they had um, big cameras on board, so the rear fuselage uh, carried the cameras, and they had apertures in the bottom of the fuselage, but also on the side, so they could do oblique photography. Right. And the idea was they flew very high, very fast, so. The, the aircraft was just built for speed, so there was no guns, it was just cameras, lots of fuel, and the ability to fly high and fast. Do, do you think about those pilots when you're flying in a Spitfire? Do you, do you imagine yourself as a 20-year-old, 22-year-old young man and, and heading off into the Battle of Britain? Yeah, you do. I mean, it, you know, I've been lucky enough to fly a lot of different Spitfires, um, 
you know, this Mark 11, of course, is particularly special to me because it's a family aeroplane. But the, I'm also lucky enough to fly, you know, a very original Mark 1 Spitfire that uh, actually fought in the Dunkirk campaign. And I've flown that across the channel to Dunkirk and back. And, and when you're looking at the white cliffs and you're looking at the sea yeah. and the channel and all that, of course you think, wow, what, what would this really have been like as a 19-year-old going into combat in 1940? And uh, it must have been exhilarating, but I tell you, it must have been pretty frightening at the same yeah, time. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a PPL of about 500 hours, okay, of 180 horsepower. TB10. I, I'm going to be yeah. dragged out onto my runway, so I won't be able to taxi your Spitfire, because I won't see where, where I'm going, because it's a tail dragger. <laughs> so we've, we're lined up, and I'm going to take it off. What, what am I going to feel compared to my, my little 180 horsepower? When, I, when, I, when you open the throttle, what's the difference you're going to feel? The first thing you, where you sense is noise. You know, the a, a Spitfire's got a beautiful sound on the outside, but when you're inside it, it's a completely different arena. You, you get a lot of noise, a lot of vibration, a lot of smells, ironically. You get the hot oil smells, you get the hydraulic smells, you get the heat. Uh, but the first sensation you'll get is noise. And when we, we check out new pilots on the Spitfire, we say to them, you know, as you open that throttle, open it to the power that you need. Do not rely on the noise factor because you will not open the throttle enough because the noise factor goes up extramental against the power. So the first thing you, you achieve is a huge amount of noise. And <laughs> but, you just have push to keep through pushing through that. Wow, yeah. OK. You push through it, and the next thing, of course, you get is acceleration because they, they go like the clappers, basically. You know, they, <laughs> they accelerate quickly, they get airborne quickly. Um, what speed are you getting off at? huge amount of noise. We normally take off. Um, the wheels are coming off the ground at about 80 mile an hour and then it accelerates very quickly to 150 mile an hour, which is our normal climb speed. Wow. Um, coming down to the ground today, um, I was at actually a very low power setting for cruising, but I'm still cruising along at 210 miles an hour. Um, mm. Ground speed into the wind, as you know, it's a windy day today. Yes. And I was coming into the wind, coming down to you, so my ground speed was about 180, but going home, um, of course, I had the wind behind me, so I was actually going across the ground at about 260-odd mile an hour. That's brilliant. And when they, when they were in combat, and you saw, I mean, the, the, what, you filmed Dunkirk. You were involved in that, weren't you? I mean, Yeah, heavily, what, what, yeah. What sort of speeds were, 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 they, were they actually fighting at? Oh, as fast as they could go, basically. I mean, lots of the, um, the pilots, when Dunkirk came along, it, you know, the real Dunkirk, um, at that time, they were using Spitfires, Hurricanes, of course, but the the engines were fairly low powered, and you know, being technical, they were using at that time 87 octane fuel. Uh, that changed to 100 octane fuel for the Battle of Britain. But the pilots needed so much speed that they were blowing up engines quite mm. often. And the then man in charge of the Air Force, Dowding, actually wrote to the squadrons to say to the pilots stop blowing up our engines we don't have enough <laughs> currently so please look after them but of course yeah. you know if you're in something like a spitfire or a hurricane and you've got a messerschmitt on your tail you're going to use exactly what you need to use to get away um so they would they'd have been going a lot faster and using a lot more power yeah. than we do today i mean when you saw the aircraft come across the top today i was at you know plus six pounds of boost in the war that aeroplane could do plus 18 pounds of boost. So we're only using a third of the available yeah. power. Amazing. Um, it really puts it into But it still sounds great, though, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you made one slight slip of the tongue earlier, John. You said when you're training new pilots for the Spitfire. Yeah. I'm 60. I've got, I've got 500 hours. <laughs> come along and see us. Yeah, come to Dark and see us. <laughs> We've got some uh, two-seat Spitfires, so you can oh. have a go in one of those to see how you get on. <laughs> John, look, more seriously, well done on what you're doing. I wish you all the very best. Uh, the fly pass is fantastic, but far more important is, is the aim of it all. So uh, if people can go to that Just Giving page, um, that, would, that would be fantastic. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll even let you mention it again. Yeah, it's Just Giving NHS Spitfire, and that gives you everything you need to know about 
how to make the donation, who to nominate, and uh, and please go and do it because uh, it's that's what it's there for. It's there to create, you know, funds for the NHS, get your name on the Spitfire, and that name will be carried all around the UK. Brilliant. John, lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much. Well done much. today. Great. Thank you.